Alrighty, guys, welcome to my weekly outlook. This is uh, the weekly outlook for the week of September 9th through the 14th. Um, thank you guys for being here today. If this is your guys' first time, because I do see a lot of new faces in here, um, I would highly recommend um, going onto my Facebook. A lot of people have been asking me about what I do and exactly how I do my trading, kind of what my strategy is. And I've, I've actually shared it publicly before guys, like fundamentally what my strategy is. If you guys go to my Facebook and you go to the videos section of my Facebook or like the photos, there's a videos album. I've done one Facebook live. I want to, I want to start doing more Facebook lives, but I've done one Facebook live and that Facebook live has almost 6,000 views on it. It's really has a lot of information in there. It's a little PowerPoint that I did kind of covering my strategy, exactly like what is Forex and that type of thing. So um, if you guys are new to following me and you want to little, know a little bit more about what I'm about and where I come from, how I do my trading and that type of thing, um, go to my Facebook and watch that Facebook Live. Like I said, it has 6,000 6, views. Obviously, it's got some good information in there. So um, take some time and watch that. But thank you guys for being here. We're going to jump right into everything. Um, as I mentioned last week, these weekly outlooks are no longer going to be like dragged on for 30, 40, 50 minutes. They're just going to be a quick little 10, 15 minutes in and out, give you guys a good insight for the week. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Very first and foremost, let's look at the economic calendar. There's not a lot that I'm too concerned about this week. There's a lot of pound of news this week. Monday morning, there's some pound of news. Tuesday morning, there's some high impact pound news. Um, and then Thursday morning as well, there's an interest rate decision for the pound. Um, now, um, we're going to look at the charts in a second. I, am, I really don't have any interest in any pound pairs, so I'm not too concerned about that. What I do want to point out is Thursday morning, there is an ECB, European Central Bank, press conference for the euro. Um, that's the main thing. And there is some high impact news for the US dollar Thursday as well with some CPI. And then also Friday morning, there's some core retail sales for the US dollar. So those are the two most notable like high impact news events for the dollar this week because I am interested in trading some dollar pairs. Um, but the big market mover besides the interest rate decision for the pound, which again, I'm not interested in because I'm not really interested in trading the pound, is going to be this European Central Bank press conference. Um, if you guys follow the U.S. dollar and the Federal Reserve, this is very similar to FOMC. They both happen eight times a year. Um, and the press conference, it is very volatile because at this press conference, I mean, it's a press conference, guys. So that there is people that are on the Euro in the European Central Bank Committee that are going to be answering questions. And a lot of these answers to these questions are, um, yeah, they're going to be answering questions. And a lot of these answers are unscripted, right? These are questions that come from the media and other notable like sources and figures. So um, depending on these answers, there's a lot of volatility. So definitely be careful with the Euro um, come Thursday morning. But other than that, let's just jump into the juice, guys. Let's see what we're looking at or should give you guys an idea of what I am interested in trading. Um, and also before we get into this, just know that this is my technical analysis and my opinion for what I think is gonna happen. Um, yes, I am accurate, but uh, with that being said, please just be using this information as educational and informational purposes only and not financial or investment advice. But in my opinion this week, I think the dollar is going to get stronger. So right now we're looking at the dollar index, the chart of the dollar index on the daily. Um, I would be looking for buying pressure on the dollar. Um, last week we saw a little bit of consolidation across the board for the dollar. But overall, we can see that uh, the end of the week had a little bit of bullish pressure from the dollar. And just looking at price action and seeing where price is moving, especially breaking above a pretty significant supply zone, uh, which is like right around the 95 area, which we're breaking through once again, um, like we have a couple times in the past over the past couple months, um, I would expect the dollar index to move back towards its highs. Um, and then at that point, we'll kind of reevaluate, I'll, I'll be reevaluating price action around the highs on the dollar index. And, seeing you know if we get a breakout or if we get a bounce um if we do get a bounce we could potentially see um a move like this we could if we do get a bounce in this area we might see a pretty strong retracement before moving up higher another scenario is of course we just break through um oops we break through um this resistance and keep moving higher so should be interesting to see um what happens but i have my eyes on the dollar in fact um 
Baker. For those of you guys that are in the premium group with the signals and the trade copy and all that, we are already in a trade for the week. So um, related to dollar strength. So that is that. Let me actually, I just need, do need to pause one thing before we go over it. Give me just a second, guys. All right, uh, with gold, uh, gold I am expecting. So you'll, you guys will notice also the way, the new way I'm doing the webinar so that they don't drag on for 30, 40 minutes and they're only quick little 10, 15 minutes is I marked off all the different pairs here to the right. So these are the pairs that I am interested in. So gold, um, I'm expecting bearish pressure on gold. I'm expecting gold to move at some point over the next coming months to move towards 1150 and then down to 1100 and then probably end the year somewhere around $1,000 per ounce of gold. Euro USD, to at least start off this week, I'm expecting Brit bearish pressure on Euro USD. Um, my target on the Euro dollar right now is right around the 113 area. And then similarly to the opposite of the dollar index, once we get down to this area, we're either going to see a bounce, which I think we could bounce all the way back up to the 1800 level before moving back lower, or depending on what happens in this area, we're going to move lower. But in both scenarios, the starting off scenario is still the same with both of those selling pressure down to the 113 area. So that's what I'm looking for. That's um, something I'm heavily interested in. And let's move on to CAD yen. CAD yen, I am watching, but I am bearish on this pair. Um, I also mentioned that I was bearish on this pair on last week's outlook. If you watched um, my outlook from last week, I had mentioned a nice, strong weekly exhaustion candle, nice little pin bar on the weekly, closing below a significant supply area. Um, so I had called last week bit that we were going to see selling pressure on this pair, and we did. Um, actually, all the other pairs, too, that I went over last week did exactly as expected. USD CAD also, which we're going to look at in just a moment. Um, but I would expect more selling pressure on this pair. Um, I'm going to be expecting this demand level to most likely break. We're probably going to see some bearish pressure in this area. And I would expect um, us to see some see this support broken and us to at least move towards these, these previous lows where we um, found some support on the last break. So couple hundred pips um, on that setup. And then USD CAD I want to look at. Um, USD CAD still looking for this trade. Um, I originally missed my buy zone by just a little a couple pips. This was my original buy zone where I'm circling in black and we missed it by just a little bit. Obviously, it did follow our over analysis, though, of moving up higher. I've been telling you guys for a while that I've been looking for buys on USD CAD, even on this, this, this pullback all the way down. I said I was looking at buys at some point on USD CAD for the real move to move back up towards the 134 area, our previous yearly highs. I'm still with that setup, still expecting price to go back up to 134. I really like the way price is kind of flagging right now on the four hour, right? We had a little bit of a, this is a very uh, classic example we see in the markets. Um, just, and if you guys want to take notes, just a very um, pretty, pretty common theme that we see. Um, you know, a lot of you guys are familiar with bull and bear flags, right? We see if we see like a drop in price and then a consolidation, most of the time we expect price to continue lower and uh, vice versa, right? When we see price spike up, see a little bit of consolidation, we generally expect price to move higher. But it's not always as simple as that. Generally, what we tend to see or what I've noticed with flags is we'll usually see um, a type of manipulation. And I'll give you an example of what we're seeing with this big bull flag right now. We've seen a big push higher on USD CAD. And then recently, the past week or so, we've seen USD CAD kind of flag out. But what we saw was we saw price break above this flag. Then we saw towards the end of last week, price break below this flag. And now I think we're going to see a lot higher. So what I'm just trying to get across to you guys if you guys are not familiar with manipulation, just something, a good rule of thumb that you can write down with flags is usually you're going to see a break of either its respective highs or lows, depending on which way. In this case, if it's a bull flag, we'll see the highs broken first, which generally will induce a lot of early, early buyers, right? When we see this flag broken, there's going to be a lot of people buying in this zone, which tricks people, right? A lot of people think it's going to continue going, but of course we see the manipulation to the downside and then uh, not only it's kind of like a win-win situation for market makers. Not only 
does everybody that buys up in this area, they usually will get stopped out because they'll have their stop losses, you know, just below the lows of the flag. But then to this side, the same psychological thing happens. People start to sell when they say, okay, that was a big fake out to the upside. And then boom, right? I believe we're going to see price move up higher. And then it's going to be a winning side for the market makers again, right? Everybody that sells down here is going to get stopped out on the move up. So we're trying to catch the smart move to the upside. Um, quite honestly, right? The smart move would have been to buy down in this area. Again, we missed it by literally within 30 to 50 pips. We missed my long-term buy on USD CAD, but still I think there's opportunity to get in. Um, just, I mean, just one very quick um, example I just see it's not perfect but we see when price just to kind of back up that the flag um, idea we see price kind of flag out right here and then price spikes below the flag spikes above the flag and then we end up seeing a nice move to the downside it's not quite as clean but um, euro USD is actually something similar is what I'm kind of expecting on on a bigger time frame so if we look on the daily just to kind of give you guys an example here's this been this big bear flag that we've had we broke below the flag. We broke up. We 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 ha and we haven't broken to the upside yet. So I think we're, we might see manipulation with a double bottom in this area, then a break to the upside. So this is just a, a much more complex structure of the same type of move happening, right? Where we see a flag, we see a break to the downside, break to the upside, and then a real move to the downside, um, which is a continuation of that original bear flag. So. That is my idea on Euro USD. And then let's finally look at Euro Yen. Euro Yen, um, I think has some bearish pressure as well. I'm expecting selling pressure on this pair. Um, the weekly candles really tell it all for me at this point. Um, we've seen a nice respect of resistance, but more so we look at the past two weekly candles and buyers have really struggled to keep up the pace that we saw two, two weeks before last. Um, when there was a lot of buying pressure in the market for this, uh, the past two weeks have given us pretty much a really clear sign that the sellers are looking to step into this market. So, um, I would be looking for sells also because I'm looking for sells on Euro USD. Um, just an overall weakening Euro is what I'm looking for, but guys, that is it. Like I said, I, I didn't, I don't want to be dragging out these webinars for too long. So if you guys have any questions, um, if this is one of your guys' first times hopping on these webinars, like I said, go to my Facebook page and go to my um, videos section of my profile and watch my Facebook Live that is that it's done. Um, and it's titled Why I Quit Trading Forex Like Everyone Else. Um, it's the only live I've done. It's got like 6K views. So it's got some really good information in there. But these, I hope these these six setups um, help you guys out this week. Um, I know I'm, this is what I'm going to be trading and looking for another profitable week. We're already in the green last week with my private group and my trade copier and all my signals. We closed the week out in positive. We just made a nice little 2% gain for the week, but, uh, progress is progress. And, you know, 2% in one week is really still phenomenal returns, um, consistently. So, Thank you guys for your time and I will see you guys on next Sunday's weekly outlook. And if you, you're in my private group, I'll see you guys tomorrow for our daily live webinar. But other than that, guys, have a safe trading week. Always use proper risk management. Always make sure you guys are using good risk ratio with all of your trades and just stay safe with your trading, guys. But um, take care. Have a great week, guys.